Hello everyone. This is Ramesh Raj Podel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel Ramesh Raj Podel. Today we are going to discuss about Crossfield and Jesse Thompson experiment. Crossfield. Crossfield is the field in which electric field and magnetic field are acting perpendicular to each other. In cross field, the magnitude and direction of both electric and magnetic field are so adjusted that deflection produced by one field is cancelled by deflection produced by other. Any charged particle is undeflected while passing through the cross field as shown in the figure cross field. In cross field, electron beam does not deviate, does not deflect because here the magnetic force experienced by the electron beam and electric force experienced by the electron beam are equal and opposite. So they cancel each other. The net force on the electron beam becomes zero. So it follows its original path and it strikes on the screen. As in this one in the figure is here, we have discussed about this thing. The importance of cross field is that it is used to determine the specific charge of an electron which is this experiment is conducted by the J.J. Thomson. Now let's J.J. Thomson experiment. This is very very important for exam class 12 students and uh, uh, the, uh, from this uh, there is Thomson experiment, long question, short questions, and the numericals will be asked in the exam. Now let's discuss about the Jesse Thomson experiment. This experiment is used to determine the specific charge of an electron. So to explain the uh, to explain the Jesse Thomson experiment, at first we have to know about what is specific charge. Specific charge of electron is the ratio of charge of electron to the mass of electron. So simply it is the E by M of electron. The principle of J. Thompson experiment is the situation of cross field. When the electron beam enters the cross field, then net force on the electron is zero. It is because that the electric force experienced by the electron in the electric field in the cross field is equal to magnetic force experienced by the electron beam. So they cancel to each other because they are acting exactly opposite to each other. So net force on the electron is zero. By using this principle, we can find the, we can determine the specific charge of an electron. Here is the construction of J.J. Thompson experiment. J.J. Thompson experiment consists of the evacuated discharge tube in which two plates P and Q which are separated by the distance D are connected to the high tension which has the potential radius. Let us suppose the, uh, the upper plate P is connected to the positive terminal and the lower plate P in Q is connected to the negative terminal. So that the transverse electric field is set up in this in between the two plates. So electric fields are acting vertically downward. Now the magnetic field is set up inside the discharge tube. In, so that the, mag the direction of magnetic field is inward and it is perpendicular to the electric field set up between the two plates P and Q. So magnetic field and electric field are perpendicular to each other in this discharge tube. Now for the cross field we have to, we have to pass the electron beam by making 90 degree 
with both electric field and magnetic field. For the for that we are uh, here the cathode and anode are connected to the potential V. The emitted uh, emitted electrons from the cathode are accelerated towards this field by applying this potential. The potential energy of the electron at the cathode is converted into the kinetic energy by applying this potential. And uh, here uh, this is the simple uh, construction, simple form of construction of that uh, experimental setup of J.J. Thompson experiment. Let us discuss about, uh, we have already discussed about the, in case of the cross field. Now, when the electron beam instead of the, this, uh, this field, if there is absent of both electric and magnetic field, there is no electric field and no magnetic field is applied, then what will happen? There is no field at all. Then the electron beam which is, which are in, which are coming which are coming from the cathode can, moves in the straight line and it strikes on the point O. And uh, let us suppose when the magnetic field on, magnetic field is applied and ap is, uh, electric field is switched up, then what will happen? Then the electron beam which are coming from the this cathode and accelerated by this potential. Uh, pass through this field. Then when it enters this magnetic field, then uh, it follows the circular path and moves downward and it is strikes on the fluorescent screen. We can see the spot here by the, which is formed by the electron beam. Let us suppose there is only the electric field. Magnetic field is switched up and electric field is switched on. Then what will happen? This the beam of electron instead to the electric field only. Then it follows the a parabolic path because the positive terminal positive plate P attracts the electron negative charge carrying electron beam. So it follows the parabol parabolic path and it strikes on the uh, point R above the its original path in the fluorescent screen. Now both electron and magnetic field are supplied in such a way that uh, the direction and magnitude of these both fields are perpendicular to each other as well as the magnitude, the, ma the magnetic force experienced by this electron beam and the electric force experienced by the electron beam are equal and opposite. So they are, they cancel to each other. The net force on the, this electron beam is zero. So it again moves in a straight line and strikes on the point O of the fluorescent screen. The experimental setup shown in the figure shows the modern J.J. Thompson experiment to define the specific charge of an electron and it consists of the discharge tube in which two electrodes A in cathode C are present and P and Q are the two parallel electric plates to generate the electric field strength E. Now working. When the sufficient amount of potential V is applied between the two electrodes, the electrons emitted from the cathode accelerate with velocity B due to the potential applied between the electrodes A and C. The potential energy of each electron is equal to kinetic energy gained by that electron, simple. And the, the expression of potential energy of electron is given by EB and the kinetic energy gained by the electron equals to 1 by 2 mv square where m is the mass of rearranging this equation we get e by m equals to v square by 2v where small v is the velocity of electron and capital V is the potential applied between the two electrodes a and c. Now when the both electric and magnetic fields are not applied the beam of cathode rays moves straight and strikes at the center O of the screen. And if the cathode rays moves under the action of electric field only, then it moves towards the positive plates and final incident at the point R of the fluorescent screen. 
I have already explained about their things. In case of applying the magnetic field only, the cathode rays deviates and finally incident at yes as shown in figure. If both electric and magnetic field are applied and their magnitude and direction is so adjusted that cathode rays move without deviation, this is the case of cross field. In the cross field, the cathode rays again incident at the point O at the fluorescent screen without deviation. So, in cross field, I, I have already I have already explained that the magnetic force experienced by the electron beam that is cathode rays equals to the electric force experienced by the cathode rays. So, uh, we have already uh, we have already find out this formula that is magnetic force equals to BV when an electron beam enters to the uh, enters to the magnetic field um, perpendicularly then the expression for the magnetic force equals to BV then electric force equals to EE. Then here we can see that small n small e cancel to each other. So, small b equals to E by B. So, the what is the condition of what should be the velocity of electron beam in, in the cross field? That is velocity of electron beam must be the equals to the magnitude of ratio of electric field instant to the magnetic field instant. Now, by substituting the values of this velocity b, small b in equation 1, we get that this is the kinetic expression for kinetic energy, this is the potential energy. And the kinetic energy equals to 1 by 2 m in, pla in, the, in the place of b, we can write e by b, e by b to the power 2, e by b whole square, so equals to e b. By rearranging the terms here, we can get that e by yeah, that is a specific charge of an electron equals to 1 by 2 into 1 by b into e square by b square. By knowing the all the terms of right hand side of this equation, we can determine the, the specific charge of an electron. And it is experimentally it was found that specific charge of an electron is 1.76 into 10 to power 11 coulomb per kg. This is the conclusion of J.J. Thompson experiment.